Okay, so guys, this is the way this shakes out. You need your periodic tables. Then, based upon, based upon the kind of periodic table that you have, if you have a paper one, you need a pen, not a pencil. Uh, if you have a paper one, you need a, a, a pen. If you've got a laminated periodic table, then you're going to need a Sharpie, and I will provide that to you. Um, and guys, if you don't have a pen and you've got paper, you can always use a Sharpie as well. Then guys, you need your notes from last time. Get your class notes from last time. Yep, that thing. And then guys, the last thing that you need is the page that I'm handing you today. And guys, you're going to want all of these things freed from your notebook and ready to shuffle around. Uh oh. All right. So, with that in mind, guys, if you have if you have a laminated periodic table, I'd love to give you a sharpie. So, show of hands, who needs them? Oh, off the bounce. There you go. Coming at you. <laughs> In the presence of Cooper, that's a tough question to answer. No, frighteningly, I was actually a nose guard in high school, a 175-pound nose guard. Um, but I did lead the state in defensive points my senior year. Um, who else needs one? Are we done? All right. So you guys are all good? Um, do you have paper or plastic? Yeah, then you're fine with that. Okay. So, guys, you all now have... Where are you going? <laughs> Go fast. Um, so, guys, you all now have these items in front of you. You've got your periodic table and an appropriate writing utensil, your notes from the last time, and you've got the notes page I gave you today. You guys ready to go? All right. So, guys, this is probably my favorite day in this class. Um, the stuff that you are about to learn, it's mind-bogglingly complicated and yet ridiculously simple. The implications of that for me are far-reaching, but I can't talk about that in a public school. But, guys, this is pretty cool stuff, and I think you're going to like it as well. Along the way, we're going to run into these things, and we will provide you the opportunity to do some extra credit, which some of you are really glad you did at the end of first quarter. A couple of you wished you had done at the end of first quarter. But guys, along the way, you're going to learn some crazy stuff. So, guys, with that said, why didn't we grade our homework? And the answer is this. Guys, grab this sheet of paper, if you will, and having done the homework, you understand that all the answers to the homework were right off of here. So, guys, what we're going to do to start the day is not grade the homework. What we're actually going to do is look at your notes page and make sure that you can find all the important information that you needed to answer the homework. So, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up here on the screen the bottom of your notes, the outline. And, guys, some of the things up here are going to be in blue. The things that are in blue, and literally do this, the things that are in blue, you're going to want to circle with your pens so that they sort of stand out on the page so that you can find them quickly. So, guys, the first thing you need to highlight or make stand out is this. The principal quantum number tells you the size of the cloud. Please circle the word size. Now, there's additional information that you need to know about this principal quantum number. The next thing you need to know is this. The values on the periodic table go from 1 to 7. Circle 1 to 7. And guys, if you're missing any of this information, write it in. Oh, by the way, do any of you not have this sheet? 
I have extras, just like in Chelsea. Anyone else? So you'll just fill in and then circle and we're looking at the bottom. All right, so guys, the next thing that you need to be able to quickly access is the idea that the capacity of an energy level is given by the 2n squared rule. So guys, please circle 2n squared rule. So those are the three things you need to know about energy levels. Now these energy levels are broken into sublevels. For sublevels, there's two things you need to have quick access to. One is this. The number of sublevels in an energy level is n. So guys, what does that mean? Well, it means the first energy level's got one sublevel, the second's got two, the third's got three, and so on. Now, what are the types of sublevels? Well, that's the next thing in your notes. They are S, P, D, and F. So circle that as well so that you can quickly find that with your eye. Okay, so now guys, moving down, we're now ready to talk about orbitals. And the only thing that you've got to understand about orbitals is there can be two electrons in an orbital, so circle that. And then, guys, finally, these orbitals with their two electrons have electrons with opposite spins. And we describe those spins as up and down. And you may remember what that means is their north poles are pointing in opposite directions. So, guys, these are the things that you've got to have quickly at your reference. You need to know that the n value is the size. They go 1 through 7, and the capacity is the 2n squared rule. You need to know the number of sublevels in an energy level is n, and you need to know the four sublevels are s, p, d, and f. You need to know that sublevels are made of orbitals. Orbitals hold two electrons. And then finally, you need to know the two electrons in an orbital have opposite spins up and down, meaning their north poles are pointing in opposite directions. You guys good? Okay. So guys, now that you've done that, here's what you're going to do. Take your notes page and kind of push it out of the way, not gone, but push it out of the way, and then bring this into sort of your working space. And guys, turn it landscape so that the title, like this, is across the top. So guys, what we're going to do now is we are going to label the parts of this, this, this image that you've got in front of you. So follow along with me. So guys, the first thing you're going to do is this. Down here at the bottom where it says nucleus, draw a circle or a half circle around it. Uh, whatever you got. Now guys, the next thing that you're going to do is this. And it's not in my drawing, so I just need to draw it in. Guys, do this. Draw, and I'm sort of out of space, but two lines, did you see what I did? Two lines across there, indicating that this is a broken line. And that'll make more sense in a minute. But again, guys, I'm sort of, I, I'm, I, I'm running out of space where I think you've got enough space. But draw two, kind of like, do you guys do that when you're drawing graphs, where if you draw that, it means it's not to scale, that there's missing information? Then, guys, do this. Across the top, take a look at your notes page. What is n? Principal quantum number, and what does it tell you? The size. Write it down. So the n is the energy level number, and it tells you the size. Then, guys, l is the sublevel number. It tells you the shape. And then m is the orbital number, which tells you the orientation. So once you're there, you've got this table all doctored up. And then, guys, there's one more thing that I need to share with you. And then this gets good. It's funny, the first time that I ever taught this material this way, um, it actually, it was gosh, like 15 years ago, and um, my brother, who's a neurologist and a chemistry major who went to neurology school, 
it was right before Thanksgiving. We were a little bit behind that year. And we were doing this the day before Thanksgiving. And my brother, who was in town for Thanksgiving, was like, hey, can I stop by and watch you teach? And I'm like, sure. And so my brother was in the classroom. And remember, he's got a degree in chemistry. And I taught this stuff. And my brother was watching me teach. And after we were done with the day, he, we were talking afterwards. And he's like, good night. I never understood just how simple and cool this stuff is until I saw you teach it. And remember, he's got a degree in chemistry. So, guys, this stuff kind of fires me up. This is fun to teach. I think you're going to like it. So you guys all caught up? You ready to go? Okay. So, guys, the, don't write anything down that I'm about to show you. But what I want to do is I want to give you a sense of what you're looking at. I mean, you know this is the nucleus, so it's got something to do with an atom. And then you've got energy level, sublevel, orbital. But guys, fundamentally, what are you looking at? Well, guys, the answer is this. You are looking at a core sample of an atom. Don't write this down. But you are looking at the core sample of an atom. So what is a core sample? Well, guys, this was me two weeks ago. We bought a house that's got a little orchard in the backyard, and we've got cherries and peaches and apples. And frankly, I hate these trees because they're so hard to take care of, and it just drives me nuts. But my wife loves them, so I do it anyway. And guys, seriously, the, the end of October, we've got bushels of apples off this one tree. I don't know what to do with them all. So frankly, what we do is we cut them up into slices, put sugar and cinnamon all over them, dehydrate them, and it's like dessert for the rest of the year. So what do you do to an apple before you can process it? Well, guys, the first thing you've got to do to these apples is cut the cores out of the apples. So, guys, have you ever seen an apple core? Okay, if you haven't, it's, it's, a, it's a stainless steel tube that's about an inch across, and it's a tube. It's hollow. And at one end, there's a handle, and at the other end, there are like these horrible teeth. Like, you could kill somebody with one of these things. And there are these teeth. And literally what you do is you take the apple in one hand and you take this coring thing and you stick the teeth over the stem of the apple and then you twist and drive and just pray you don't put it through your hand. But you just twist and drive and that tube eats its way through the middle of the apple and then when you pull the tube out, you can see through the apple and what's inside the tube the core of the apple. And then there's this little place where you can put your thumb in and push it out. And then you've got the core of the apple. But guys, the core of the apple actually communicates a lot of information about the apple. So imagine that we did that to this apple. But instead of going all the way through, imagine that we just went to the middle and then pulled the core out of that apple. Well, guys, what do we now know about an apple? Well, here's what we know. We know that in the middle of the apple are the seeds. And then above the seeds, we've got the flesh of the apple. And then we've got the skin of the apple. And then we've got the stem. So by taking a core sample, it's like you can peer inside of the apple and get a sense of what it's made of. Now, we're obviously not talking about apples. We're talking about atoms. So guys, what is in the core of an atom? The nucleus. And then guys, because we're no longer talking about the Bohr model, we know that around the nucleus we don't have orbits, we have orbitals. And what are those orbitals like? solid clouds like the fan blades, right? So guys, around the nucleus, we've got a cloud, and then a bigger cloud, and then a bigger cloud. And these clouds just stack up on top of each other. And so we've got cloud inside of cloud inside of cloud that behave like solids, like the fan blades, all of the, the Schrodinger model of the atom. But now guys, watch this. What if we take a core sample of this? What's going to be at the bottom of our core sample? The nucleus. And then, guys, if we come along and do this, what do these lines represent? 
the edges of the clouds. Do you get it? Guys, that's what you've got in front of you. Down here is the nucleus, and then these lines represent the edges of the clouds. So let me show you this way. Don't draw this, but let's just make sure you're clear. What we're saying then is this. If we come back here, the nucleus is at the bottom, and then these represent the edges of the clouds, but we're just showing that little piece of it. Do you understand now what you're looking at? All right. So guys, that's it. I'm done. I've now taught you everything that I need to teach you today. All that I needed to do today to help you understand this. Guys, all I needed to do today to help you make total sense of all of this is just teach you what a core sample is. And guys, guess what? For the rest of the day today, I'm not going to teach you another thing. All I'm going to do is ask you questions, literally. You're not going to hear me tell you anything new for the rest of the day. If you ask the question, well, you're welcome to ask questions, but that's all I'm going to do to you. Guys, I'm just going to spend the rest of the day asking you questions. And as you answer these questions, we're going to put the answers on our sheets of paper. And guys, because I'm going to ask you these questions in a specific order, guys, all of a sudden as we're asking these questions, this stuff is going to leap off the page. But you already know all of this stuff. All I have to do is help you organize it. So guys, where are you going to find the answers to these questions? Down here, in your notes from last time. So guys, you ready to go? Here come the questions. Guys, review what you know about energy levels. How many energy levels are there? One through seven. Now, how many electrons go in an energy level? Two n squared rule. So guys, look, let's do this. So these rungs right here represent the boundaries of the clouds, the energy levels. So let's number them. This is energy level one. This is energy level two. This is energy level three. This is energy level four. What should that go up to? Seven. But guys, check out. This is what we're going to do. Go dot, dot, dot up to seven. We're going to stop at four, but it could go to seven. So now, guys, let's do this. On the lines, let's represent how many electrons can be in these energy levels. So how many electrons can be in the first energy level? One squared is one times two is two. How many electrons can be in the second energy level? Two squared is four. Double that is eight. How many can be in the third? Three squared is nine. Double that is 18. How many can be in the fourth? Four squared is 16. Double that is 32. We're going to stop there. Guys, again, I'm not teaching you anything. You knew the end. This is in your homework. You guys already knew this stuff. Okay, so now guys do this. We are now going to go from left to right, and we're going to talk about sublevels. So check your notes. What do you know about sublevels? Two things. First of all, what are the four sublevels? S, P, D, and F. How many, how many sublevels can be in an energy level? N. So the first energy level contains one. It's an S. The second contains two, S and P. The third contains three, S, P, D, and so on. So let's do it. Guys, do this with me. Down here next to the first energy level, draw an arrow, but stop. The tip of your arrow should be just to the left of the letter L. And guys, understand, it doesn't have to be that intricate of an arrow. You could just do this, and that's fine. So draw an arrow. Guys, what that arrow is showing you is we're now going to talk about sublevels. So let's talk about sublevels. So guys, the first energy level has how many sublevels? One. 
first as one, second as two, third as three. That's what it means that the number of sublevels at an energy level is n. So guys, the first energy level has one sublevel. And what kind of sublevel is it? S, P, D, or F? S. So guys, that's what we're going to do. We are going to draw a line. Go ahead and do it. Right underneath L, we are going to draw a line to represent the sublevel. Now, that sublevel is an S sublevel. You already knew that. It's an S sublevel, but we are going to label it 1S. Now, this is an interesting little piece of logic. Guys, follow along. This is now the thinking that you need to understand. First energy level contains two electrons. How did we know? 2n squared rule. So guys, the first energy level contains two electrons. The first energy level contains one sublevel, and it's an S. So now check this out. If there's two electrons in the energy level, and this energy level only has an S sublevel, how many of these two electrons have got to be in that sublevel if there's nowhere else for them to go? Both of them. Write it down. There's two electrons in the first in the 1s sublevel. Now, guys, if that logic didn't make a lot of sense, just trust me on this for now. It will make better sense as we move along. So now, guys, here's what we're going to do next. We're now going to go to orbitals. So now check your notes again. How many electrons can go in an orbital? Two. And those are the clouds. So now, guys, do this with me. If an orbital can contain two electrons, how many orbitals do we need to contain two electrons? Just one. And guys, this is what it looks like. Don't write it down yet until we talk. So guys, this is the cloud. This is the fan blades. This is the shell. This is whatever you want to call it. Guys, this is the orbital in the 1s sublevel. Now, what do the dots represent? The probability of finding two electrons, because there's two electrons in that s, in that orbital. So guys, this is the probability of finding two electrons, but remember, that these electrons really do behave as if they're this big solid sphere. So guys, what does it mean that we have an axis going up and down, one left and right, and then one diagonal? Three-dimensional. So guys, this is what you want to draw. What you're going to do is you're going to draw an up and down line, a left and right line, and then a diagonal line, three-dimensional, and then instead of drawing all the dots, let's just draw a circle. But realize, as you draw the circle, what are you actually drawing? A sphere. It's three-dimensional. And that three-dimensional sphere is the space where you will most likely find those two electrons, and we think of them as being solid clouds, just like the fan blades. How you doing? You OK? Lots of questions, right? So you guys all have a pretty picture like mine? OK, can we go on? You're all caught up to what's on my screen. All right, so now guys watch this. Second energy level. Now we're up here. Draw an arrow. Second energy level, eight electrons, 2n squared rule, right? How many sublevels are in the second energy level? Two. And what are they? S and P. But now, guys, watch this. Don't draw anything yet. We're still going to use lines to represent the sublevels, but watch how this goes. The second energy level's got two sublevels, S and P. But look how they go. Guys, to draw this right, come, ver come horizontally across here then drop a little, and that'll be the 2s, and then come up a little, and that'll be the 2p. So draw it like that. All right, now guys, let's do some math. So here's the deal. 
We established earlier that there's two electrons in the 1s. Well, guess what? It turns out that there's two electrons in all of the s's. So guys, if there's two electrons in the s, how many have to be in the p? Where did you get? You're right. How did you get six? Well, there's got to be eight. And if two of them are there, the other six have got to be there. So there's six electrons in the p orbital. You just stretching, Zach? Okay, so now guys, watch this. Now let's, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Six electrons in the p sublevel. So now let's talk about orbitals. So guys, we're now going to go over to orbitals. So two electrons in an orbital. So how many orbitals do we need to hold two electrons? Let's do that again. How many electrons go in an orbital? Two. So two electrons in an orbital. So how many, electron, how many orbitals do we need to hold two electrons? Just one. And it actually looks like this. It's a bigger sphere. So guys, go ahead and draw that. Up and down, left and right, in and out, bigger sphere. But now, guys, this is after this is where this starts to get pretty crazy. Now let's look at the p orbital, the p sublevel. How many electrons are in the p sublevel? Six. There are six electrons in the p sublevel. How did we know it needed to add up to eight? Two are in the s, six have got to be in the p. Now, guys, remember, two electrons go in an orbital. So if we need room for six electrons, how many orbitals do we need if two electrons can go in each orbital? We need three. And guess what? There are three p orbitals, but they are not spherical. They're shaped like figure eights. So guys, draw this with me now. Draw one that is up and down, up and down. Draw one that is left and right. And then draw one which is on the diagonal. What's that? So this, this, is, if, this should be like right here. So dump and dump and dump. So it's these. So these are the orbitals that hold the six electrons in the P. So guys, when you're done drawing this, you're done for a second. So take a break and let's make sure we understand what we're looking at. So guys, first of all this, what does it mean that we drew one of these figure eights up and down and one of them left and right and one of them diagonal? What does that mean? It means they're three dimensional. They actually look, <laughs> if I can do this, they actually look like this. So guys, why would these p orbitals go like this rather than all stack up on top of each other? What's in these orbitals? Electrons, and electrons are all negative and they repel each other, so they go like this. And when they do, what are all of these angles? 90 degree angles. So guys, these three p orbitals all repel each other and they spread out at 90 degree angles because of their repulsion. So guys, here's what we've said. The first two electrons in an atom are in the 1s sublevel that has one orbital and it's a sphere. The next two electrons in an atom are in the 2s sublevel, and it's a bigger sphere. Then the next six electrons in an atom are not in spherical orbitals. They are in figure eight shaped orbitals, and they go up and down, left and right, and in and out. Go ahead. Um, 
Right, so they're trying to get as far away from each other as they can, but as close to the nucleus as they can. And when they do, they take on those shapes. Yep. Correct. Yep, you got it. You guys all caught up with me? So guys, check this out. This is where this gets interesting. So here's what we've said. First two electrons are in a small sphere. The next two electrons are in a bigger sphere. And then the next six electrons are in these figure eight shapes. We call them dumbbells. They're in these dumbbell shaped orbitals that are the same size as the, two, the 2s, the same size as this. So guys, how many electrons do we have? Well, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten. So we've got 10 electrons, which makes this atom neon. So if we bring a small sphere and a bigger sphere and these three figure eights together, we now have room for 10 electrons, and that's neon. But all of these things are around the same nucleus. So what does this look like? And guys, the answer is this. This is a neon atom. Guys, this is what a neon atom looks like. Do you see it? Talk to me about this. What is this small sphere right there? The 1s orbital. What is this bigger sphere right there? The 2s orbital. Now, guys, what is this blue figure 8 shape right there? the 2p. It's one of the 2p orbitals. And what about this red guy? It's another 2p orbital. And what about this green guy? It's the third 2p orbital. And when we've got the 1s and the 2s and then the three 2ps all together, that gives us the electron, wow, that's a mess. That gives us the electron structure of neon. So guys, this is actually what a neon atom looks like with the small 1s, the bigger 2s, and then the three dumbbell-shaped 2ps. That is a neon atom. Do you get the idea? Crazy, right? Questions? You okay? Go ahead. Yes, that is exact. And did you notice? So Jacob's thought was, does this, it builds on each other. And that's exactly what happens, that we, we start in the middle and work our way up or out as these atoms get more and more complicated. That's exactly right. That's a great way to conceptualize this. What else, y'all? You okay? Go ahead, Cooper. Yeah, so good. Yeah, so what's going on with this and this orange? They're just trying to show you. Those are supposed to represent the fan blades. They're trying to show you that there's actually something moving through space. To be honest with you, I tried to delete it because I thought they were distracted. I didn't draw this. I lifted it off of a web page. And I tried to delete it because I thought they were distracting and it just made the picture ugly, so I left them. But that's all they're trying to do is show you that there are actually electrons traveling through these spaces, like the fan blades. So you guys OK? 1s, 2s, 2p, and so on. And guys, the s's are spheres. And the P's are dumbbell or figure eight shaped. You good? Okay, now guys, watch this. This is subtle, but see if you can pick up on this. We're now going to go back to your class notes. What changed? What's different? Do you see it? What, what changed from what we left? Hi, guys. Do you want to just leave this? Did you see what changed? Guys, you'll notice that all of these orbitals, remember originally we had a sphere and a sphere, and then we had three figure eights. Well, guys, we're not actually going to draw the spheres and the figure eights. What we're going to draw to represent those or to replace them is boxes. So this box represents a sphere. This box represents a bigger sphere. These three boxes represent the figure eights. And guys, if those are the orbitals, then what do the arrows represent? 
the electrons, and what's the significance of them being arrows going in other directions? They're opposite spins. So guys, these arrows represent the opposite spinning electrons in these atoms paired up in the orbitals. So let's keep going. Good question. How do you know? And so the answer is 1 is smaller than 2. So the 1s will be smaller than the 2s. So the 1 and the 2 tell you the size. The s tells you the shape. Remember we said this is size and this is shape. So the 1 tells us the size. The s tells us the shape. So this means small sphere. This means bigger sphere. This means bigger figure eights. That's next. You ready? Guys, here we go. Third energy level. Draw an arrow. So, guys, the arrow is now telling us we're going to look at the third energy level. So, guys, let's review how many sublevels in the third energy level. Three, and what are they? S and P and D. But now, guys, watch. Draw this carefully. There are three S and P and D, but guys, look. When you come horizontal across here, go down for the S, slightly up for the P, because this is really critical. The 3D has got to be right below the fourth energy level. Go ahead and draw it. You're not going to like this. Except for that it's pretty cool. So guys, now, oh, I'll let you catch up. And you know what? Maybe see if you can do it. On these lines, write how many electrons will be in the S and the P and the D sublevel. Give you a second to do it, and then we'll do it together. So guys, what did we establish before? How many electrons are in an S? Two. So the same thing there. There's two. How many are in a P? Six. So how many have got to be in the D? Did you see it? Total of 18. Two and six is eight. 18 minus eight is 10. So now guys, and let me just warn you. This is going to be a bad day, but it's going to be the only day. By the end of you doing homework tonight, you're going to be so sick of drawing arrows, you're going to want to kill yourself or me. Don't do either, please. Guys, on Thursday, the arrows go away. But today, you're just going to have to draw arrows. So, guys, let's do this. Two electrons in the 3S. It is a bigger sphere. Draw a box with two arrows. Now, guys, the 3P. What is the shape of the P orbitals? Figure eights. Bigger figure eights. But we're not going to draw the figure eights. We're going to draw three boxes. Because let me show you a shortcut. To draw three boxes, do this. Draw a rectangle and then two lines. Now you've got three boxes. Now, let me show you a shortcut for drawing arrows. Don't do this. It takes too long. Don't draw your arrows like this. Draw them as half check marks. It actually makes them go faster. Only draw half of the arrowhead. Or something like this. But now, guys, check this out. By doing some simple subtraction, we proposed that there should be 10 electrons in the D. Now, guys, check this out. If there are 10 electrons in the D, how many orbitals does it take to house 10 electrons? Five, two in each, right? So, guys, if there are 10 D electrons, there should be 5 D orbitals. Well, let's see. And if there are, are they spherical like the S? Are they dumbbell shaped like the P's? 
They're none of those. Because they actually look like this. Don't draw them. There are 5D orbitals. But they are not spherical like the S. They are not dumbbell shaped like the D's or the P's. One of them has even got a donut around the middle. But guys, the thing that's cool to me is there's five of them. Just like we predicted, there are five D orbitals. But guys, we're not going to draw them. What are we going to do instead? Five boxes with ten arrows. Now we're getting somewhere. Told you you were going to be sick of drawing arrows. But if it makes you feel any better and you want to know just how sad my life is, imagine teaching this stuff for the last quarter century. And every year that I teach this, I get to draw more arrows than you do. It's actually kind of depressing if you think about it. All right, you guys ready to go fourth energy level? Here we go. Draw your arrow. Actually, if that's the worst my life gets, I've done pretty well. So guys, fourth energy level, how many sub-levels? Four. What are they? S, P, D, F. But check this out, guys. This gets a little crazy. S, P, D, F, like this. Guys, the 4S sublevel actually overlaps with the 3D. I know. I told you, this gets crazy. And then we've got the 4P, the 4D, and the 4F. And it overlaps. Uh-huh. <laughs> why? Tell me. And actually, there is an answer to why. Guys, it turns out that the F, the, the D orbitals are so complicated that it's actually easier for the electrons to make a bigger sphere, the 4S, than it is smaller, complicated D orbitals. So the S fills before the D, even though the S is bigger. So, let's place electrons in these. How many in all the S's? Two. How many in all the P's? Six. How many in all the D's? Ten. Do the math. How many are in the F? Thirty-two. Minus two. Minus six. Minus ten. 14. Now, guys, and I know it's getting crazy. Let's draw orbitals. Just a second. Or are you stretching? Okay, but let's do this first. So, guys, how many orbitals in the S? One. The 4S is a huge, huge sphere. Draw a box with two arrows. The 3P are huge, huge dumbbells. Draw three boxes. The D's are huge clover leaves, except for the one with the donut around the middle, and that's a big donut. But guys, draw five boxes with ten arrows. So we were right here 4S with one box, and then the 4P with three, and then the 4D with five. Yeah, okay? And to, to be honest with you, Ethan, if, if, you, if you understand the pattern and you're not getting all the boxes right now, one of the first things you're going to do in homework is draw them, and you'll have another chance at it. Oh, what happened? Bless you. Oh, you know, you know what happened is Skyward crashed in the background and brought everything down with it. That would be this, inactivity. 
Um, so, oh, there, cool. Okay, so now guys, check this out. We're now looking at the F sublevel. Our math told us that there should be 14 electrons in the F sublevel. Now, how many orbitals does it take to house 14 electrons? Seven. And guess what, guys? There are seven F orbitals, and they look like this. Double, yeah, we got double units. We got multiple lobes, crazy, crazy, wacky. But guys, regardless of their shapes, the thing that fires me up is there's seven of them, just like we predicted. But of course, we're not going to draw these. We're going to draw seven boxes with 14 arrows. This is actually a good time to have a beard because you can kind of rub your beard and go, hmm, it's nice. You guys all caught up with me? Go ahead. Every arrow is an electron. Good. Every box is an orbital. That's a wonderful summary. Yep, go ahead, Ellie. It just keeps going. We're only going to draw it out to four, but yes. So guys, you ready to talk extra credit? Check this out. Guys, exactly as Jacob said, the arrows are electrons, the boxes are orbitals. But guys, don't miss this if you want to do the extra credit. Here's the deal. We understand these orbitals are not really boxes. This is a small sphere. This is a bigger sphere, and then some figure eights that are the same size. This is a bigger sphere, then some figure eights that are the same size, then an even bigger sphere, then the clover leaves that are the same size as the figure eights, then some more figure eights the same size as this, and it just keeps stacking bigger and bigger and bigger by size and shape. Well, guys, for extra credit, here's your challenge. Do this. 1s, 2s, 2p, all the way out to the 4f. And, guys, these are some examples of what this might look like. Given what you know now, this is pretty cool. Here's the 1s. Here's the 2s. Here's the 2p. And you'll notice that they made the 2s and the 2p about the same size. Then we've got the 3s, and then we've got the 3p, again, about the same size. And then the 4s, which is bigger, followed by the 3d, which is about the same size as the s and the p. Not bad. If you want to try it that way, that would be great. Um, some other people tried to do this on paper. This got crazy. You've got 1s, 2s, and then the 2p. You can sort of see the lobes peeking out from behind. And then the 3s and the 3p, and then the 4s, which sort of ran off the page and turned into sort of sharp corners, and then the d's and that are all like so. But guys, some people got really creative. This is pretty slick. I don't know if they did this at the school or not, but they got a hold of a laser cutter and they did this. This is the 1s. You'll notice the three axes. Would you hold that for me? So that's the 1s. Then here's the 2s, which is bigger, and the s's are yellow. Then they did the p, and you'll notice that the p has got the three lobes, and it's the same size basically as the s. And then there's the three s, and it's kind of cool because what you can do then is stack these all on top of each other, and if you get the axes to line up, you can see the craziness that's going on inside of the atom. That's not bad. I like this one. This was creative because somebody was like, I don't have access to a laser cutter, so they actually just did it on, on wax paper. So they did the 1s, and then they did 
the 2S and the 2P. They're not very good artists, but I love the idea. And then they did the 3S and, and so, and then you can sort of stack this up and see the depth and complexity of the atom. Guys, you could do this, you could do something different, more creative. Um, I had people actually do these um, on CAD programs and they actually drew, that's pretty cool. They actually drew these things um, actually three-dimensionally accurately, however you choose to do it. But guys, what you're going to do is you are going to represent what's on the board. You're going to represent the 1S, the 2S, the 2P, the 3S, the 3P, the 4S, the 3D, the 4P, all the way up, making them correct by size and shape. All the way up to the 4F, yeah. Well, you know them because that's these numbers. So this is the 1S and it's small. This is the 2S and the 2P. They're the same size, but this is a sphere and those are figure eights. So the numbers tell you the size. No, the 4S is bigger than the 3D. So the 4S will be a bigger sphere. The 3D will be smaller clover leaves that will actually be the same size as the 3P and the 3S. Okay. So guys, this is going to take a little bit of internet research because you're going to need to look again at what these things actually look like. And this is the way we're going to handle this. Um, first of all, they're due the day of the test. And you're welcome to work with a partner if you'd like. Not more than two of you. You're welcome to do it on your own. But guys, if you'd like to work with someone, you're welcome to do that. And it's not like I'm going to split the points. So if we make this worth like, I don't know, it's not going to be 100 points. But if we make it worth 100 points, it's not like 50 for you and 50 for your partner. You'll get the same score, but you'll have access to all the points. Um, and guys, your partner doesn't have to be in this room. They could be in other classes of mine. They could also be in Miss Call's classes because she's doing this too. So, guys, that's your challenge for extra credit. Other questions? Yeah. Mm hmm. Because they're all in the fourth energy level. Yep, you got it. You guys good? Okay, so now that you understand the extra credit, guys, we're going to move on. Don't miss this, because here's the deal, gang. It does not matter if you do the extra credit. You still have to know this. Guys, and check this out. Here's what you've got to know. This is where this gets tricky. Guys, you have got to know that the first two electrons go in the 1S. Then the next two electrons go in the 2S. Then the next six electrons go in the 2P. Then the next electrons go in the 3S. Then the 3P, then the 4S, then the 3D, then the 4P. You have to know this order. So how are you going to keep track of that? Well, guys, Hank Green suggested you memorize it. Remember, he suggested that you write down 1S, then 2S, 2P, then 3S, 3P, 3D, and then that arrow diagram. Uh, uh I hate that thing. That's the way my high school teacher taught this to me, and I hated it. But then I got to college, and they taught me more about this, and I'm like, thank goodness, now I understand it. Because, guys, here's the deal. You've got to know 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P, 5S, 4D, 5P, 6S, 5D, 4. You've got to know the whole thing. But here's the thing, guys. You don't have to memorize it. And you want to know why? Because every single person in this room walked in here 45 minutes ago already knowing this. Guys, every single one of you knew 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P. And you all knew this. You just didn't know you knew it. So guys, what is it that allows me to say with certainty that you all knew this already? What do you all have in common? A periodic table. Guys, the first day of school, one of your homework assignments was to buy a periodic table. And when you bought a periodic table, guess what you bought? 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P. That's how the periodic table is put together. You just can't see it. So guys, grab your Sharpies and your pens and let me help you see it. So guys, check this out. 
What do these numbers on the left represent? Energy levels. What should it go up to? Seven, but it doesn't. But guess what? Your periodic table does. So guys, grab your periodic tables and find something on the periodic table that has something to do with seven. See it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Guys, the horizontal rows on the periodic table are the energy levels. Label them. Yeah. Did you see this? So this is 57. This is 58. So these guys down here should actually be shoehorned between 57 and 72 and 89 and 104. It's just that if you put them there, it creates a tumor in the table. So they cut them out and put it at the bottom. Okay. So guys, did you do that with me? One through seven. Those are the energy levels. So guys, we've got the energy levels. The next thing that we need, are you all caught up one through seven? The next thing we need are the sub levels. So let's do this. Let's do the S first. S has got two. S has got two. S has got two. S has got two. Guys, the S sublevel always has two electrons. So now go back to your periodic tables. Find a region of the periodic table that's associated with the number two. Do you see it? It's right here. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But guys, in order for this to work, do this. This is the S sublevel. Label it, but to make that work, redraw helium. I circled it in red so it stands out. Redraw helium as a neighbor of hydrogen. Don't erase it over here. Don't scribble it out. It actually technically goes in both places. But guys, for this to work, helium needs to be a neighbor of hydrogen. So there's the S. So now let's do this. Let's go back to our notes. Oh, you guys are still drawn. Did you, Jake, did you forget your periodic table? So you'll notice that this is all on our permanent table, and you can just copy it later. Yeah. I probably shouldn't have said that, because now everybody knows the answers. Okay, so guys, let's do this. Let's look at the P sub level, given that in talking with Jake, I just showed you where all the answers are. But guys, the P sub level has got six, right? Where on the periodic table is there a region? Six. The far right, right hand side. Two or six. Guys, that's the P sub level. Now, guys, now guys, let's do this. this. Let's go back, let's go back to, to our notes. And the, and the D, D has, has 10. 10. Guys, where, guys, where on our periodic table is 10? 10. The middle. middle. Guys, guys, this arrow right here, here is, is 2, 4, 4 6, 8, 8, 10, 10 boxes wide. wide. That, that is the D sub level. But guys, but guys label, label it D minus 1. one. You'll see why in a minute. In a minute. Now, guys, what's the, the only thing that's thing left? left? Well, well that, that would be the F. F. And the and F, F is 14 is electrons. electrons. You want to guess how many boxes are down, down here? here? 14. Guys, this is the F sublevel, but it's F minus 2. Now, guys, once you've got this all labeled, I'm going to show you how to keep from having to memorize the arrow diagram. And when you get to college and you have friends that are taking chemistry with you and they're trying to write out the arrow diagram to try to remember these orders, you can teach this to them and you're going to be a hero. So guys, let me show you how this works. You got all of this? Okay, so guys, watch. Don't write this down. Have you guys all played the game Battleship? Okay. So guys, the thing that you've got to understand from Battleship is it allows you to identify places based upon a coordinate grid that is a number and a letter. 
So with that in mind, what is that point right there? 3B. Number first, it's 3B. Guys, what is that point right there? 2C, what is this? 1A, what is this? 4A, what is this? 4D, what's this? 3C, what's this? 2B, what's this? 1A, what's this? Oh, come on, guys. If you know that this is 1A, you know that this is 1S. What's this? 2S. What's this? 2P. Good, Ellie. What's this? 3S. What's this? 3P. What's this? 4S. Guys, guess what you just said out loud? 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S. If you can play Battleship, and if you can count, you can do this. Because, guys, electrons 1 and 2 are where? 1S. Where are electrons 3 and 4? 2S. Where are electrons 5 through 10? 2P. Where are electrons 11 and 12? 3S. Where are electrons 19 through eight, or 13 through 18? 3P. Where are electrons 19 and 20? 4S. Now watch this. Where are electrons 21 through 30? It's D, but it's minus 1, so 4 minus 1 is 3, 3D. And then where are these electrons? 4P. But guys, why is this D minus 1? It accounts for this overlap. Do you get that, Ellie? Because you ask. That's why. It's the overlap. So, guys, electrons 19 and 20 are in the 4S. 21 through 30 are in the 3D. And then those are back out into the 4P, and it just keeps going. So the question now becomes this. What are we going to do with this? Guys, take your notes page. We're almost done. Take your notes page and flip it over. Just watch. We're, oh, so with the F... Don't worry about it. We're not going to go there. As you get into what's called inorganic chemistry, sophomore year in college, you'll start to fiddle around with the Fs. We're not going to worry about it. Okay. So guys, just a second. Guys, let me show you what you're going to do with this. What have you got to be able to do? Well, guys, the answer is this. You have got to be able to draw what are called orbital filling diagrams. We're going to do two together. So guys, right now you're thinking to yourself, wait a second, 1S, 2S, 2P, holy smokes, I don't know if I know what I need to know. This is what you need to know. Guys, we're going to do this for oxygen. So here's what we're going to do. Write this down with me. Oxygen is element number eight. So find oxygen on the periodic table. What sublevel is it in? So it's in the P, but it's in the 2P. But guys, just like Jacob said, we can't start in the 2P. We've got to, and I love the way he described this, build up from the middle. So guys, check this out. Where do electrons, just playing battleship, where do electrons 1 and 2 go? 1s. Write it down. Now, where do electrons 3 and 4 go? 2s. Write it down. Now, guys, where do electrons 5, 6, 7, and 8 go? 2p. And we're going to write this down. Now we are to the 2P, which is where oxygen is. So now what we need is orbitals. So guys, what does the 1S orbital look like? A small sphere. Draw a box. What does the 2S orbital look like? Bigger sphere. Draw a box. What, is the two, what do the 2P orbitals look like? Three dumbbell-shaped figure eights. Draw three boxes. 
Now guys, in these orbitals, we now need to place eight electrons to make this oxygen. So here's how this goes. Electron number one goes there. Do it with me. Now where does electron two go? It pairs up, but what will be true of its spin? Down, opposite, good, electron two goes there. Now guys, let's do electron three. Electron three goes there. Electron four will pair up with it, opposite spin. See how those check marks are easier? So that was electron four. Now guys, electron five goes here. This is the only thing that makes this tricky. Guys, check out electron six. The p orbital has got, I'm sorry, the p sublevel has got three orbitals. And these electrons are going to try to spread out as much as they can. So guys, electron six is going to go there. And then electron seven is going to go there. Now guys, where does electron eight have to go? Well, now it's got to pair up, and it's going to go back there. And that's electron eight. And this is the orbital filling diagram for oxygen. There's no empty boxes. But now guys, check this out. And you guys are, you guys are bright and inquisitive, so I want to show you something. Please don't write this down. But right now you're maybe thinking to yourself, why on bloody stinking earth do we need to know this? Let me show you. Guys, please don't write this down. Hydrogen is in the 1s, and it's got one electron. So guys, I'm going to do the orbital filling diagram for hydrogen. It's 1s, one box, one electron. No, 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 write this down. But guys, watch. Why do you need to know? Here's why. So I just did the orbital filling diagram for hydrogen. Now I'm going to do it again. Hydrogen is 1s, one electron. So now on the, on the board, we've got the orbital filling diagram for oxygen and the orbital filling diagram for hydrogen and the orbital filling diagram for hydrogen. Some of you are already putting this together. See this empty space right there? And see this empty space right there? Guys, oxygen can come up to hydrogen and they can link their empty spaces together and form a bond but you'll notice that oxygen still got another empty space. So another hydrogen atom can come along and stick its electron right there, linking those empty spaces. And what did we just make? Water, H2O. See guys, what you're gonna find out in the next unit is that these orbital filling diagrams link together like jigsaw puzzle pieces and explain how all molecules are formed. Carbon dioxide, water, sugar, you name it, all that's happening is these orbital structures are linking together empty space to empty space to form molecules. That's why you need to know this, because in the next unit, we're going to build molecules out of these things. Yeah? Yeah, great question. But remember what we said. How did two gases create a liquid? Hydrogen is an element. Oxygen is an element. When they bond together, they form a new substance with unique physical and chemical properties. In the same way that sodium, which is a shiny explosive metal, and chlorine, which is a brown deadly gas, makes table salt. When these things bond together, this process of bond formation creates a new substance with completely new properties. Go ahead. Great question, and the answer is yes. So if this electron were oriented up, and if this electron was oriented up, one of them would flip over as they pair up. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Go ahead, Jake. Yes. Exactly. If all the boxes, you, can I stretch you a little bit? Guys, Jacob said this, if all the boxes are filled, does that mean they can't bond? And the answer is yes. But let me ask you this. Where on the periodic table would the ones be that are all the way filled? 
all the way over there, and that's these, and these are called the noble gases. And these noble gases are called noble because noble means standoffish. They don't interact, and that's why they don't bond because they're already full. Yeah, good for you. Trent, are you? Yes. No, and actually, you, you got to let me push that question back because what you're going to find out is that, that you're right, and it's so cool that you can visualize that, that carbon would only have those two electrons in the P, but what happens, I'll just tell you, and we'll talk about it more later, one of the electrons in the S jumps into the P, and then it provides four places where it can bond instead of two. And we'll talk more about that in the next unit. Go ahead. So for electron, like boron? Let's, yes. So what would boron look like? So if we did boron, which is right here, it would be 1s, 2s, 2p. And as we draw the boxes, we'd have this. And so boron's got five electrons, so we would go one and two, three and four and five. So how many bonds can boron form? And the answer is one, because that is its only bonding site. They're empty. The, the, the potential for them exists, but right now there's nothing there. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. It would only have a single dumbbell. That's exactly right. Yep. You got it. So guys, what I'd like to do is do one more of these with you just to get you sort of fully prepared for what's coming in homework. Guys, what we're going to do now we're going to do copper. And guys, copper is element number 29. I picked a big one. Let's find it. So guys, it's down here in which sublevel? D, but it's minus 1, so it's 3D. So guys, we've got to build up to the 3D. So where do electrons 1 and 2 go? 1S. So we're going to write that down. 1s. Now, guys, where do electrons 3 and 4 go? Right here. 2s. Write it down. Now, guys, where do electrons 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 go? 2p. Now, what about electrons 11 and 12? 3s. This is becoming an aerobic activity. Guys, where do electrons 13 through 18 go? 3p. Now, what about electrons 19 and 20? 4s. Good. Now, what about electrons 21 through 29? D. Good, but it's minus 1, so it's 3d. Now, guys, we need orbitals. Small sphere. Draw a box. Bigger sphere. Draw a box. Three dumbbell-shaped peas. Draw three boxes. A bigger sphere. Draw a box. Even bigger dumbbell-shaped. Draw three boxes. A huge sphere. Draw a box. But guys, how many boxes will we draw for the Ds? What if you forget? Well, guys, just do this. Count the number of boxes in the D, the number of atoms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Divide by 2, 5. So two answers, Sarah. Why is it 3 instead of 4? So answer number 1 is because it's minus 1. So 4 minus 1 is 3. But that doesn't understand the real reason, doesn't explain the real reason why. The real reason why is because of the overlap that we described in this picture. Is that okay? All right, guys, so you ready to draw some arrows? Told you, you're going to get sick of these. Here we go. One goes there, two goes there, three goes here, four goes there, five goes here. Where does six go? Next box over. Six goes here, seven goes there. Where does eight go? Eight, nine, ten, paired up. Does that make sense? Okay, then 11 goes here, 12 goes here. 
then 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, guys, we're ready to get into the D. So we're going to go 21. Where does 22 go? Next box. 22, 23, 24, 25. Then they pair up. 26, 27, 28, and 29. Now, here's an interesting thought. How can you check to be sure that you're right? Well, guys, how many empty spaces do we have in the D? One. But look at where copper is. It's one box short of the end of the D, and we know we're right. Not bad, huh? Okay, so guys, we only have about three minutes left. When you sit down to do your homework, I would encourage you to do the back first, because that's these. Do the front second. But guys, hold on. Please hear this. And I don't say, just hear me out. Guys, you have no idea whether you can do these or not. Because all you've done up until now is watched me do them. Go home tonight. Work on them. When you need help, come by tomorrow. Tomorrow during Pride is at your discretion. I will be here. Come and get help. But guys, hold on. Do not make this mistake. When I see you on Thursday, we are going to take these and build on them. And if you can't do them, you're going to be in trouble. So you have 46 and a half hours to figure these out. Make sure you get help if you need it. So guys, please hand your Sharpies to the aisle. Well, hand my Sharpies to the aisle. And guys, we will go in two minutes. And please, I would love to help you if you need help. And guys, we'll just grade homework. We'll record homework scores when I see you next time. Yeah, just one second. I need to um, stop recording now.